The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 616. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have an amazing lady on the show today. She is a cultural consultant and educator for Spark Learning Solutions, and I'm really excited to have her on and share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Ling Ling Tai. Ling Ling, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to listeners. All right. Thank you for having me on on your podcast show. It's such an honor to be here today. So a little bit about myself. I started off as a cultural consultant and educator as a company about a little bit more than a year ago. But I have been living in six different countries. I've traveled to and worked in 30 countries across four different continents. So I'm currently residing in Singapore at the moment, although I travel all over Southeast Asia region. My mission in life is really to support individuals, leaders, teams, and organizations so that they can collaborate effectively across different cultures. And I do this through education, coaching, and consulting. On top of that, I'm also a podcast host, just like yourself, for a leading podcast show called Leaders of Learning. And it's leading in Southeast Asia. It's number one in the iTunes chart in Vietnam, Cambodia, top five in Singapore, Indonesia, and Malaysia, and top 10 in the Philippines and Sri Lanka. It's also being listened to in 28 different countries around the world. That's just a little bit about myself. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what's your cultural background? Well, I'm born in Malaysia. I've grown up and lived and worked in six different countries. So that includes Malaysia, now in Singapore, that's two. That also includes Canada, my younger days. I did my master's and worked a little bit in the UK. I also grew up in Australia and worked a little bit in the States. So I've been in many different places. Ethnically, I'm Chinese. So I come from a traditional Chinese background. Thanks for sharing that. And Ling Ling, what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? So this is something that I've come across quite recently as I you know, leave the TV on while I work, and that doesn't really happen. I was watching the movie called The Second Best Exotic Marigold Hotel, and one of the quotes that caught my attention was a conversation between the taxi driver and one of the characters. So the character asked the taxi driver, how do you make a difficult decision? And the taxi driver said, you know, there's no such thing, ma'am. Throw a coin in the air and we always know what side we want it to land on. So to me, this is a fantastic quote about self-confidence is because we intuitively know what we want is just having the courage to follow what we know. Thanks for sharing that great quote. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? So to me, self-confidence means having the belief within yourself to achieve whatever you desire, be it your dreams, your goals, and also having the courage to strive towards it. So part of being self-confident is, you know, being true to your heart by listening to it and trusting that your gut, your intuition will take you to where you are supposed to be and where you want to go. Thanks for sharing that great definition. I also believe like having that belief in yourself is so important to go out there and live the life that you want. So thanks for sharing that. And Ling Ling, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? So my idea of self-confidence is not really so much of a moment, but rather it's something that we are naturally born with. If you look at children, they can confidently go, confidently go out into the world and try many different things without being hampered by what people say. They just go out, ask the questions they are curious about, explore the world as they do as children. So each and every one of us, we do have that self-confidence. But then again, as we grow up and we socialize, we, we take in uh, what the media, what the people around us tells us about what we should do, how we should live our life. And because of all this information and all the opinions of everyone around us sometimes, well, most of us, we have our self-confidence buried under everyone else's opinions and expectations. So what it was like before when this gradual discovery of rediscovering my self-confidence was more of, how shall I put this, following, trusting and following what I wanted. So before this, I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't have a sense of self because a lot of the decisions I made was based on everyone else's opinion, was based on everyone else's expectation. And there came a point where I questioned myself, you know, who am I? What do I want in life? 
and what is my purpose. So there wasn't really one defining moment. It was more of like multiple accumulation of moments of reflection, questioning myself. Thanks for sharing that. And I know that's something we all go through, right? Especially, you know, living under people's expectations, right? Especially growing up Asian and, you know, feeling like we always have to follow what everyone tells us to do. But what made you realize, you know, you can go out there and be, you know, who you wanted to be, be the person that you were meant to be, you know, be your true self, have that courage to go out there and do the things that you want. Was was there any other aha moments? So in my life, I I had many aha moments, but I can pick out two if you don't mind me sharing two pretty major moments in my life. The first one happened when, you know, as all of us, we go through a major breakup. So I broke up with my ex of seven years, and he's my first boyfriend. And being together in a relationship for seven years, especially in in the years where you're meant to explore who you are, what you like, was rather devastating. So when we broke up, it left a, a big void in my life. Because I didn't know what I liked without my ex. I didn't know what I enjoy, what, you know, who am I without my ex. And that kind of sparked off a, an exploration and a journey of self-discovery about who I am and what I wanted to be. Uh, so a couple of years after I broke up my ex, I decided to pursue a master's in psychology in, in the UK, which is why I ended up in the UK. In a way, when I pursue my master is mostly to discover who I am again, and also to be educated also. And a part of me knew that if I learn about psychology, not only will it help myself, but it will also help everyone around me as well. The second time an aha moment happened to me was fairly recently, a little bit more than a year ago, my late mother has passed away suddenly. And when you're so close to mortality, it kind of makes you realize that you know what, life is really too short. And time is precious. So what you make use of your time really defines who you are. And that was when I decided, you know what, enough of being in the corporate rat race, enough of being a a cog in a well polished machine, I want to spend time with the people that matter. And I want to spend time with the work that has impact on myself, and my family, my friends and society. So that's when I took my second leap of leap of faith and started my own cultural and learning consulting and education company. It hasn't been a easy year. It's been tough. It's been slow. It definitely difficult. But I feel so much more whole and satisfied. If there are any challenges that come into my path, I definitely have the self-confidence to face it as compared to before I took that leap of faith. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, people don't realize how precious life is and like what we do in, in the short time that we have here, right? Sometimes, you know, it takes a loved one to some to pass away to realize that right like for me you know my aunt passed away suddenly and you know it was just like a wake-up call like what if I go through life just you know living like a zombie and just doing what everyone tells me to do and a lot of people you know don't realize that right until something tragic happens right like for you you know your mother passed away and you realize like life is so precious right we just can't you know go through life you know waking up going to work and doing the same thing on repeat like for the next 20, 30, 40 years, however long, right? We, 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 you know, we intend to work and we just realize there has to be a better way and we just have to go out there and do it. And yeah, like you mentioned, it's scary. It's not always a walk in the park. You know, there's going to be hard days. There's going to be days where you want to quit, but like you mentioned, it's more fulfilling. It gives you meaning to life, right? And because of that, what's your life been like now? My life now, it's it's still not entirely easy. I work even more than before. But a friend of mine actually mentioned to me a couple of days ago, and this is a close friend from uh, when I was in university. He he listens to my podcast and he says I sound a lot happier than when I was working for an organization. I mean, I'm not materially as wealthy as before, although I hope one day to be a lot better. But at least I know I'm reaching out to many people. I know The work that I'm doing is impacting others and making life a lot better. And if just so happen I happen to go next week, I know I've done all I can, what I can with the time that I have, with the resources that I have to make make my life and the life of others better. So there's a definite, you know, like greater sense of fulfillment and satisfaction. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, just you going out there and doing what you want 
you know, that's considered a success. You know, I, I know we live in a world where success is measured by fame and money and status, but, you know, people don't realize like just doing something that you love is a success on its own because not too many people get to do that or are too afraid to even, like you mentioned, take that leap of faith, right? Just us doing that is is an excess of, of our, on its own and we have to realize like you know to celebrate every single success that we have because the more we celebrate it the more we can attract it into our lives so you know i think it's great that you're out there doing your thing and even though it's not always easy it can be harder than you know working a job or you know being you know doing what you're told it's like you mentioned more fulfilling and you're a lot happier and you know the more and you know most successful people they never started out as easy, right? Like some of them went through 10, 20, 30 years, like doing what they love without any, you know, feedback, without any like um, instant gratification, but they knew it was worth it in the end. And, you know, they be they've become big success because they just kept doing, they just kept going at it. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you're able to do that. And you can see that, you know, everything will work out in the end and the universe has our back. And, you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey to self-confidence. What'd be that one tip you would give to her? Well, the tip that I would give to that woman who's listening to this episode is discover yourself. Go out and explore. Find out what you like, what you don't like. Learn everything. Reflect on it. See how it fits with you, what makes you happy, what makes you not happy. And learning all of that, exploring and reflecting helps you sharpen your instincts because your instincts, your heart will take you to where you're supposed to be. So go out there, keep learning, keep exploring, keep reflecting, meet different people, go network, talk to everyone and just be yourself, man. Thanks for sharing those tips. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do or check out your podcast, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yes, I do. If you want to find out more about Spark Learning Solutions, my website is www.sparkls.co. That is www.sparkls.co. If you want to check out my podcast, my podcast is called Leaders of Learning with Ling Ling. You can find it on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, uh, Google Play Music, and Overcast. Thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Ling Ling, you can also head on over to the TaoofSelfConfidence.com and search for Ling Ling's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I really just want to thank Ling Ling for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Ling Ling. Thank you. Not a problem. It was really great having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Get your free self-talk tape for building self-confidence by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.